going on? Yeah, right here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to do something different today. So it was 1983 when I uh, ran away from home, went to Sydney, Australia, as far away from the United States as I could get. And uh, the idea was to, to get away from all my problems. And what happened was I, I was still there. Uh, <laughs> but it took me all of three days to find my first real spiritual teacher. He was amazing. And he loved to work with energy. And he taught me and the other people that were in the community there in Sydney how to, how to use energy, how to manipulate energy to create the things we wanted in our lives. He was a master at it. He was quite amazing. He played in spheres that I still don't completely understand. One day I called from the office because I ended up on staff there uh, uh, because I, I just had to play the game, the big game. Uh, I called him once from uh, the office. He was at his home, and he answered the phone by, he didn't say hello, he answered my question. And he says, is there anything else? No. That was, that was the kind of relationship that we had and the things that, that happened that were so amazingly mystical. But everything he did had to do with energy. And he called these things in our, in our bodies energy centers. And it wasn't until I came back to the United States that I even heard the word chakra. But he talked about these seven energy centers in the, in the body and taught us how to use them. And I found that one of the most incredible things that, that I've ever learned. Now the idea of this originates from Hinduism. And you might say, well, we're not Hindus. Why are you talking about this, John? Uh, actually, we're more Hindu than you think. Uh, Ernest Holmes is said, if you read his biography, they talk about how he got so much from the Greek uh, uh, philosophers, but not so much. Really, where he got stuff was from starting with Troward and the other teachers from, uh, from India that he created his philosophy around. So all of you have been touched by Hinduism, whether you know it or not. Uh, today, you're going to get touched by it a little bit more uh, because we're going to look at this idea of the chakras. And you know, We've been playing with this in this community uh, since the beginning. These seven bowls that are played so beautifully today and every time we meet on Sunday represent the seven chakras. They're, the colors match the chakras. The tones ma match the sh chakras. That's part of who we are. It's part of our culture. And then we've got these beautiful uh, glass containers up here, all different sizes and shapes. But if you'll notice, they are the colors of the seven chakras. And so they're always around us, but we really don't talk about it. And so today is our day to uh, explore this and find out what's there for us. It's already uh, within the fabric of our culture, but it's time to bring it back out into the open so that we know what we're doing. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to explore them. And the reason for the stool uh, is, is that we're actually going to do some meditation. Not quite yet, but we're going to do some meditation around these seven chakras. And those of you, who, who in the room uh, meditates on any kind of a regular basis? Oh, well, this is going to be easy for you. Then. This will be fun. All right, so uh, we begin. We can't start with the chakras. We really need to start with the, uh, uh, the energy field around your body. We all have this etheric body that is pure energy. You can't see it, but it can be identified and known. There are, there are ways. I've, what's that photography called where they take... Curly and photography can take pictures of this. And it's interesting, and, and even though none of us think about having an aura around our bodies, we do. All, and it doesn't go away. It's part of who we are. Um, and it's, I, I, I think I would compare it to gravity. How Before Isaac Newton actually gave it a name and said this, this phenomenon of things falling to the earth is actually a force, everybody just thought everything fell to the ground. Of course, they thought the earth was flat, so it was really easy. Everything just went down to the ground. And that was accepted, and that was the way it was. But it's obviously much richer than that, this idea of gravity, as are, is this aura around your body. It's something that you use. Uh, in, when I was in Australia, we would, we would do all kinds of exercises. We would be aware of our own energy field, the energy field of the person before us. We would blend our energy fields. I mean, we did all kinds of stuff that looked, Looks to normal people out in the world crazy, but it was amazingly powerful, the work that we did. And uh, uh, it's been used around 
around this center, actually. Many years ago, there was a, uh, the head of the Appalachian Dowser Society was a member of our center. His name's Richard Crutchfield. And he was a dowser. And he used to come and work with our kids and teach them to douse. That's him. These children in this picture are grown-ups now. They own businesses. They have families. But, uh, and as you can see, it's so old, it's sepia tone. <laughs> but Richard came out and would work, with, work with, with the kids. But he also did work with me in the men's work that I did. And he would take his dowsing rods and demonstrate how we have an energy field around us. And he would, someone would be picked to be in front of the group, and he would take his dowsing rods and step away from them and then work toward them. At some point, the dowsing rods would cross. And he said, okay, that's the edge of your aura. And then he would tell everybody in the room to send love to that, to that person, whoever it was. And we'd all do the, we love you, we bless you kind of thing, and, and just send all kinds of energy to them. And he would get off to the edge of the room and take about three steps, and they would cross. Because their aura had grown so much. It's not like everybody gave energy that filled the aura. But it's, I, I think the way it works is that when you're in a safe, wonderful, beautiful experience or environment, your aura grows. You expand it. If you walk into a beautiful garden or a cathedral, your aura just, just expands. And when you feel like you're in danger or there's something, some kind of struggle that you're dealing with, your aura comes in really close. And it tightens up. And that energy field is pure energy. Pure energy. And it has a vibratory level. We all do. And that's, that's where your emotions happen. That's where you actually experience that idea of, of, of emotional feelings in your life. It's very, it's very useful, very powerful when you're aware of it. When you're not, it's sort of like gravity. It's just like you don't notice. So that's what an aura is. Within that aura, in, in your body, not in physical form, but again in this etherical sense, are seven points. Seven, what I like to call portals. These are the seven specific locations of these energy centers called chakras. And they are not just there. You're using them all the time. You're sending energy out. You're receiving energy back in. When you're communicating with somebody, there's as much or more of this going on than any words that are shared. There's an exchange of energy. My teacher in Australia said that you could be walking down the street and pass somebody who's got really heavy, sticky, nasty energy, and then suddenly you notice that something's going on with you. It's not germs. It's energy. But the beauty was, he said, you can cleanse that out of yourself anytime you want. And all this, I have heard other teachers talk about protecting oneself and shielding oneself from the, the negative energies. There's no such thing. Energy is energy. And anyone can simply clear it by knowing it's there, but you've got to know it's there. You've got to be aware of it. You've got to know that you're using these seven portals to create your human experience. So this is a, a reality that many people in the world, specifically in India, but many other people around, understand and use. And it's something we can use. So today we're going to experience it. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So I want to ask our, our uh, uh, bowl players, they're going to help us with this, at least the ones on this side of the room, to get ready. And let's go ahead and turn the house lights down. And if we could, uh, David, would you close that door? <clears throat> Thank you. I'm going to turn the, the, these lights off too. So those of you who are getting uh, uh, a video of this, you'll hear my voice. You won't see a whole lot. Uh, but it's okay because we're going to be fine. This will be fun. So begin by uh, making your body comfortable. Perhaps putting your feet flat on the floor. Putting your hands on top of your legs. I, don't cross your hands unless you absolutely have to. Uh, but if you would leave them, maybe palms up with your eyes closed. And let's begin by taking a breath of gratitude. Let's be grateful in this breath for our bodies, for these body temples that we use to carry us through the human experience. Recognizing that our bodies give us so much, much more than we are aware. Our bodies give us the physicality that we experience with our five senses. And our body also gives us this ethereal, energetic connection to all of life. 
we have this wonderful emotional body where we feel things, where we connect with, the, with life energetically. What a blessing that that is. And if you would just take another breath of gratitude for this wonderful body that each of us carries. So it's important to understand that as we do this and we talk about colors, that these colors that we're experiencing are the colors of the rainbow. There are seven primary colors in every rainbow. And these are the seven colors of the seven chakras. And as you experience each chakra, be aware of that color. Be aware of the, the place in your body where the energy center is. And use this as we talk about qualities and principles of these chakras. Be aware of them. Allow these words that I bring to you to just wash over you. Don't try to remember them all. And when I talk about qualities, allow yourself to just settle in on maybe one or two. And allow that to reveal itself within you. So we begin with the first chakra. This is called the root center. It's lo located right in the center of where you are sitting right now. Be aware of where that is. It's a powerful point in your body. And it aligns with this sound. It is repre representative of the color red. We use this chakra to be present in our bodies. Its primary element is earth. And the universal principle of this chakra is gravity. These are the qualities of the first chakra. Foundational support. Survival. Grounding. Nourishment. Trust. Physical well-being. Home. And family. Through this first chakra, we heal our fears. So I invite you to breathe in these qualities. Foundational support. Survival. Grounding. Nourishment, trust, physical well-being, home, and family. Breathe them in and breathe out any fear that you find in your body. Anything that is there that feels out of place. Any fear. As we listen again to the root chakra bowl. Now we move to the second chakra. This is your sacral center. It's located just below your navel. So be aware of that space. Be aware of it. You may want to put your hand there. You may want to just touch with a finger. Or you may just want to be aware of that sacral area. And align now with this sound. This energy center is represented by the color orange. 
And we use this chakra to feel and express desire. Its primary element is water. And it represents the universal principle of polarity in life. We know polarity as the masculine and the feminine. Or the ebb and flow of the tides. Or all other forms of relational opposites. The principle is polarity. These are the qualities of the second chakra. Change. Movement. Flow. Sensation. Pleasure. Emotion. Desire. Through the second chakra we are able to heal our guilt. I invite you now to breathe in these qualities. Change. Movement. Flow. Sensation. Pleasure. Emotion. Desire. And breathe out any sense of guilt that you find in your body. Do this through the second chakra. chakra your solar plexus center is located in your abdominal area just below your rib cage right in the center of your abdomen there it's that place where martial artists raise their chi energy align with this sound now This energy center is represented by the color yellow. And we use this chakra to take action in our lives. Its primary element, element is fire. And represents the universal principle of personal power. These are the qualities of the third chakra. Energy. Activity. Autonomy. Authority, individuation, self-esteem, productivity, and power. Through the third chakra, we are able to heal our shame. So I invite you now to breathe in these qualities. Energy, activity, autonomy, authority, individuation, self-esteem, productivity, and power. And breathe out any sense of shame that you, you may find in your body. Do this through the third chakra.
Next, we focus on the fourth chakra. This is your heart center. You know where your heart is. Align with this sound. Give us that again. This energy center's color is green. And we use this chakra to love and to be loved. Its primary element is air. And it represents the universal principle of equilibrium. These are the qualities of the fourth chakra. Love. Balance. Self-reflection. Self-acceptance. Relationship. Intimacy. Compassion. Devotion. It is through the fourth chakra that we are able to heal our grief. So I invite you to breathe in these qualities. Love. Balance. Self-reflection. Self-acceptance. Relationship. Intimacy, compassion, and devotion. And breathe out any sense of grief that you may find in your body. Through this, your fourth chakra. Now move up to the fifth chakra. This is your throat center. Let's all align with this sound. This energy center is represented by the color blue. And we use this chakra to speak and to be heard. Its primary element is sound and represents the universal principle of vibration. These are the qualities of the fifth chakra. Creativity, communication, symbolism, resonance, truth, and voice. Through the fifth chakra, we are able to heal the lies in our lives. So I invite you now to breathe in these qualities of creativity, communication, symbolism, resonance, truth, and voice. And breathe out any sense of lies that you may find in your body. Do this through the fifth chakra.
now we move to our sixth chakra. This is your third eye center. It's located in the center of your forehead, just above your eyebrows. Align with this sound. This energy center is represented by the color indigo. If you don't know that color, it's the color of blueberries. And we use this chakra to see the invisible. Its primary element is light and it represents the universal principle of illumination. These are the qualities of the sixth chakra. Intuition, imagination, dreams, transformation, vision, and clairvoyance. Through the sixth chakra, we are able to heal the illusions and the delusions of our lives. So I invite you to breathe in these qualities. Intuition, imagination, dreams, transformation, vision, and clairvoyance. And breathe out any sense of illusion or delusion that you may be carrying in your body. Allow your sixth chakra to flow. And finally, we come to our seventh chakra. This is the crown center, located at the very top of your head, as though it faces up toward the heavens. Align with this sound. This highest energy center is represented by the color violet. And we use this chakra to know what is ours to know. Its primary element is thought and represents the universal principle of consciousness. These are the qualities of your seventh chakra. Cognition, consciousness, self-awareness, divine identity, transcendence, intelligence, unity, and oneness. It is through this seventh chakra that we are able to heal our attachments in life to those things that no longer serve us. So I invite you to breathe in these qualities. Cognition, consciousness, self-awareness, divine identity, transcendence, intelligence, unity, and oneness. And breathe out any sense of attachment you may find in your body through this, your seventh chakra.
so you've been now reintroduced to this aspect of your human, human existence, that place that connects spirit and body, that place that connects every aspect of our environment to our understanding. It is from this place that we can find a great richness in our lives, even as we practice the science of mind. So when you're ready, we're going to gently turn these lights up. You can open your eyes. Thank you. Was that good for you? I've always believed that there is more in life that we cannot see than there is that we can see. Those of you that can resonate with that can use this understanding as a great tool in your life. When you feel off balance to go to your heart to understand that if something is confusing to you that you can clear it up through your, uh, your third eye and that you have the ability to be grounded through your root chakra to know your great desires through your sacral and to use all of these, uh, even the power center uh, in the solar plexus to make your life work better. Be aware of this. Use this as you will and life will continue as always getting better and better because that's what we do. Thank you very much. I love you very much. That was wonderful. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you, uh, bowl players. You did a brilliant job. That was yeah. phenomenal. Thank you. That's... I feel so open. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be having yoga classes in the center. <laughs> so our welcomers have come forward. Who's here for the very first time? Who chose to come to Center for Spiritual Living? We got a whole back row there. Welcome, 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 all of you. I'm so glad that you came. We've got someone over here. We've got a gem over here, I think, don't we? You, you've been here before. Why are you raising... Oh, you're giving him love. I thought you were raising your hand. Who are you and where are you from? Wonderful. Welcome, Daniel. I'm so glad you're here. Are all you people on the back row together? Yay, what good people you hang out with. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm so glad that you're here. And welcome, Jim. Have you been here before? Oh, I... Never mind. <laughs> I'm so glad that you chose to come to the center today. And, and these two people right here, these two women, welcome, welcome, welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Asheville. I'm so glad that you are here. We've got more people just popping up like magic over here. Um, you're getting a card. If you want to know more about what we do here, then you can fill the card out and, and uh, we'll put you on our mailing list and let you know about things that are happening. We have a great e-news that goes out every week. So if there's, uh, if you just want email, then just check that and all we'll do is send you email. But we have fantastic things going on here. And I want to say welcome to what I believe is the best center ever. And I think that when we come to this center or a center like this, our lives change because it really is all about energy. It's not about the physical form of things, it's about energy. And when we come together, we are lifted on a vibratory level into more health, more prosperity, more love, and more joy. So I'm so glad that you came today because I believe we all have been lifted together and that our lives are changed forever. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'd like to invite our prosperity acceptors to come forward, take out what you're going to give. For those of you watching online, you can go to the donate button on your YouTube page and it will take you to our PayPal account and you too can be part of the support of this center that gives to the entire world, China, Russia, Ukraine, 10,400 people were on our website last month alone. So 
please uh, feel free to support this work so that we continue to change the world through the teachings of science of mind. And those of you in the room, thank you for your generous gifts, whether you're putting something in the basket, whether you're sending gifts in through the mail, whether you give through PayPal or the auto giving, I am so grateful for you. We have learned how to prosper and we reap the harvests of our giving by living a blessed life over and over each and every day. So thank you very much. I like to open my hand, put the gifts on my hand, cover it with the other one and pull it close to my heart. Ah, that open green heart chakra, bathing the gift. And what I know is that God is the source of all supply, that money is God in action, that every time we give, we don't give a thing, we give the energy that we are. And so we go with that gift. And I know that that gift touches and blesses each and every one of us, that each one of us comes together to give from our fullness, to give from our joy, and we create the life of our dreams. We were born to be blessed and to live the blessed life, and we open and accept that completely. I know that each and every one of us comes together this day to make this center for spiritual living everything that it was ever meant to be. It is a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom that touches the lives of all who call it home. And we'll repeat our investment affirmation together aloud. We freely, happily, and lovingly make this invest. Oh, I freely and joyously give from the abundance and fullness of my overflowing wealth, knowing my gift goes with love as it touches and blesses the world. And so it is. I was reset. 